urban jet skiing, the latest craze for adrenaline-loving New Yorkers. I mean, what's not to love? Bombing around on a 300 horsepower Kawasaki around Manhattan in the Hudson. That's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And I've got to tell you, I felt like James Bond. The power between our legs came from two of the most powerful beasts on the market. The Yamaha Wave Runner FZR, what can I say? I knew that this was going to be a monster of a machine, but I had no idea exactly how quick this would be. This baby has a supercharged 1.8cc four-stroke four-cylinder engine. And that, combined with the Nano XL hull, the super lightweight, means I have power, means I have amazing acceleration. In other words, this thing right here. Pure adrenaline! Woo! The Hudson's unpredictable currents regularly tip thrill-seekers into its icy waters. Luckily, our water vehicles were built with stability in mind. My wave runner's rounded keel kept me safely upright, even on very tight turns. Whereas I relied on a specially crafted V-shaped hull to keep me and my craft level. The Kawasaki Ultra 300X, one of the most powerful jet skis ever built. This is a fully-fledged racing machine from the racing department at Kawasaki, designed for nothing but stupid amounts of speed. Woo! Come on, baby! Yes! This thing's incredible! Oh, I can't tell you how much fun this is! The Kawasaki 3 Ultra 300X. The 300 stands for the brake horsepower. 1500cc engine, supercharged. It's an absolute monster! All very cool. But the real reason for us being out here was to test some tech that falls much more squarely into a price bracket we can all afford. Bluetooth headsets. How choppy is this water? If they can work out here on the Hudson, then using them in your car should be a breeze. It's a good place to test them, you know, to test the fit uh, in, in an active environment with lots of noise. It's cool. To test them, we each put on the same headset, then tried to have a phone chat while blasting around the Hudson. The Jabra Supreme, the best feature as far as I'm concerned about the Jabra Supreme is its 24mm speaker, which gives you what they call HD sound. That's what we received. Yeah. High quality sound, possibly not loud enough, but then given the madness of where we were, that's possibly you know, the reason. Tidy little unit. It is a tidy little unit. And one of the features that I really liked on this one was actually the flip boom arm. Yeah. You flip it open to activate a call, or you can flip it back to end the call. Is it just me, or does Jabra Supreme sound like a dessert? Or a really tasty main course? <laughs> what was they? What were they thinking? Our second headset was the Jawbone Era a lifted device that comes with four sizes of earbud, supposedly to ensure a perfect fit. On the whole, it fits OK. However, on these choppy waters, I found my jawbone kept coming loose. How about you? It's really lightweight, almost to the point where you can't really feel like it's, it's there. But it's one of the more discreet ones. It actually works. It did work. Yeah, I especially being worked. out on the sea. There's so much noise going off, the engine, the water. The Jawbone uses a technology called Noise Assassin, which was developed for tank commanders to blank out engine noise in battle situations. And in the middle of the bay, it was working very well indeed. But then, at top speed, it fell off my ear and into the water. It just sank to the bottom of the Hudson when I just hit that wave. I'm going to go look for it. Hopefully, our final pair of headsets would last a little longer. The Plantronics Voyager Pro HD uses special voice alerts to tell you when you're running out of talk time or battery. Hey, Polly, how do I sound? You're coming through loud and clear. It has three layers of wind smart technology, which is great for wind distortion. Being out on the water on the water-powered jet bike, doing 40, 50 miles an hour, there was a noticeable difference in the wind noise reduction. I think there was as well. And that's not all it does. It's got something called smart sensor technology, which means it knows when it's on the side of your face. Which means calls should be answered automatically when you're wearing the headset. So, what did we think? I think it's really cool not pressing buttons to answer the call. What do you think? Pretty good, too. They all worked really well. The, the battery life didn't let us down and nope. we could hear what was going on. So it does pretty much come down to the styling, doesn't it? And maybe the weight of the headset as well. Time for the G-Ratings. 
the Jawbone era gets three Gs. It's light, discreet and very clear. But we can't ignore the fact that Jason's fell off. The Jabra Supreme gets three Gs, thanks to a good-sized speaker and easy controls, though it's a little bit on the large side. Our winner with four Gs is the Plantronics Voyager. It's stuffed full of clever techie tricks which really do work. And we like that.